This is the first part of a tutorial series. In this video, I will go over how I set up a simple actor responsible for creating a Fog of War post-process volume and sending data from world to the post-process material. I consider this an intermediate guide, and as a viewer you should be comfortable with simple C++ and common components like post-process volume and render targets. By the end of the video, you should be able to set up your own simple Fog of War post-process volume with Spotlight around the player, as shown in this clip. Main actor responsible for setting up post-process volume is called BP Fog Manager. We will open its blueprint and go directly to the C++ parent. This class is responsible for setting up the main post-process volume and applying a material to it. We set the global post-process volume component in the constructor and set B unbound to true so that it encompasses the entire world. Then in begin play we create an instance of the fog material so that we can pass the world values to it and we apply this instance to the post process volume. Now in every tick we want to send current location of the locally controlled character to the fog material. Since materials and textures mostly work with normalized values between 0 and 1, we will divide the character's world location with world size to get the normalized value and pass it to the fog material. Back in the fog manager blueprint, we will now take a look at the fog material implementation. Core of the material boils down to dark shadow color, regular color, and a mask which influences what is dark and what is light. This mask combines multiple black and white masks to only return white to the parts of the map that can receive light and where either local player or his beacons are at the moment. To keep video concise, we will first focus on primary two masks, the floor mask and the player spotlight, and in the later videos we will go over more complex ones, such as beacon spotlights and player shadow mask. Let's take a look at the floor mask first. We will switch to another map to get a better understanding of floor mask. Here we have a floor where only dark grey parts are walkable by the player. We don't want the non-walkable parts to receive light. Here we have a render target. This render target returns a black and white mask of this map where only walkable floors are white. To see how this map is made, check the related video in the description. We will apply this mask as floor mask in our fog material. Here in the texture sample node we read the mask's black and white pixels in normalized coordinates between 0 and 1. In pink part of the graph we take the world coordinates and divide them by the map size to normalize them as well. We handle two types of world here, one where coordinates are positive and another one where coordinates are between a negative value and a positive one. In first case, we simply divide the pixel's absolute world position by map size to get the pixel's location in 0 to 1 range. In second case, we do exactly the same, but first we add half size of the world in order to shift pixels from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 range to 0 to 1 range. Finally, we output the mask to the portal node, which we then use in combination with the rest of the masks. For player spotlight, let's first refresh our memory. We use fog manager to communicate world information to the fog material. In begin play, we will send map size and character visibility radius 
and in tick component we will send character UV location to the material. Here in the fog material we will read those parameters and create a black mask with white sphere at character location. Same as floor mask, we output it as a portal node, which we then use in combination with the rest of the masks. Going back to the end of the fog material, we now have understanding of how floor mask and player spotlight masks are made. Excluding the rest of the masks, we can now combine these two to create light around the player. We will do that by combining the two masks using min node to get only white pixels where both masks are white. We'll also add a saturate node to make sure our max value are clamped between 0 and 1. Dropping our fog manager to the scene, we now have a simple spotlight around the player's location. 